hear a lot about data science, AI, machine learning, right? These are all things that are in the milieu right now. I think they fundamentally point at the same idea, uh, the same concept around, you might call it machine intelligence, where it's about how do you use computers and the vast amount of data that's out there, that kind of big data, and then leverage that to make more intelligent decisions as an organization, um, as a government, as a nonprofit. This really comes from a few major secular trends that are happening. One is the plummeting cost of computation uh, and the plummeting cost of storage. So now we have the capacity to store that data relatively cheaply and to be able to process that data relatively cheaply. And then the other major trend is that everyone's walking around with smartphones, everyone's interacting with the internet for a large par portion of the day, and so we're able to capture huge parts of the human experience and digitize that information and store it in the cloud. So when we have all these connected devices that are measuring us, uh, we can actually understand a lot about human behavior. And that's actually really, really fascinating. Um, and with, from that, we're able to create products, services uh, that are so much more rich and so much more personalized than we've been able to do before. And so if you think about maybe even the simplest example might be something like a Netflix, right, with a recommendation engine that's able to serve up content in a very uh, targeted way so that they give you, they show you out of their, you know, library of probably millions of possible videos for you to watch, the five to ten that you're most likely to want to watch. And they can do this from what's called a lookalike analysis, where they will look at what um, other people who have watched a similar set of videos as you have, how have they've rated those videos, and how much they've liked those videos. And then see what other videos those people have liked that you haven't yet watched. And that's probably a good candidate for a video that you should watch. Right? So that kind of lookalike analysis, or if you're a data scientist, you'd probably call that a recommendation engine. That's actually a very powerful technique. Uh, and it's sort of very fundamental to a business that has tens of millions of videos and they know you're only going to watch one tonight. Right? How do you pick out that one good video so that's not just a huge search problem it, for a consumer, but it's actually a pleasurable experience for them? And that you know, has implications beyond Netflix. Right? If you think about a company like um, Amazon, that's incredibly important for them. Uh, they have billions of items on their store. Uh, you need to be able to figure out what um, to buy. And so they can tell you the right item. They can just maybe get you to buy something that you otherwise would have purchased. And that you know, has a direct impact on their bottom line. And it also makes consumers happier, right? It helps you, you reduce the amount of time you spend searching for products and services. So I think these kind of data-enabled services where companies can give you what you want when you want it, that's becoming increasingly uh, powerful within the uh, cons kind of consumer market and it's becoming increasingly the standard. So I think what we've seen is that for a lot of legacy enterprises um, that are not digital first, that haven't been able to embrace data and data science, there's a almost a kind of an adversarial relationship between the consumer and that product or service where you're say, saying as a consumer, hey, I had this great experience when I'm interacting with Facebook or Google or Netflix. They seem to give me what I want. Why can't you give me what I want? And when you experience that, right, uh, there's a lot of fear on the part of those companies, the legacy companies, that their ability to sort of maintain that market is going to rapidly uh, evaporate. And it's going to be deteriorate at a really quick rate if any of these sort of digital companies uh, enter that market. Because they understand how to leverage data. They understand how to use that, uh, the information they have about consumers to give consumers a fundamentally better product. There's obviously a lot in the news about Cambridge Analytica, um, Facebook, and how we societally deal with data, and how we are, uh, how we should deal with data. Should there be regulation? Should we have more privacy protections? Um, and I think these are really interesting and valid questions uh, that we, we as a society should ask, right? Um, and it seems that we're entering a period where 
there's certainly within Europe with the passage of GDPR, there's increasing reluctance to just say, uh, Facebook, Google, you can have free reign over all of our data in an unchecked way. And I think we'll see what happens in the, uh, as we move forward uh, with uh, regulation and this kind of um, consumer protections. Thank you.